Good evening. My name is Ajuri Ingilali, and you are most welcome to Africa's Future Leaders. <laughs> The Mandela Washington Fellowship Regional Conference offers insight into what is possible when young people of impact and altruistic intention work together. But we understand that ultimately true change begins with the determination and effectiveness of one person's individual action before collective action can be mobilized toward the same direction. It is for this reason that Africa's future leaders deems it essential that we profile and examine the stories and impact of individual young leaders across this diverse continent of Africa we call home. On this edition of the program, we introduce you to one of Nigeria's most renowned disability advocates and a young leader of international repute, Lois Auta. Afflicted with polio at the age of two years old, Lois turned her lifelong physical impairment into an incredible mandate to defend the rights of Nigeria's physically challenged community. We are honored to share her story with you. This is the beginning of a daily routine in the life of Lois Auta. Routine for her, but extraordinary to many. On a brisk morning, she drives into her place of work at the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NPC, entering into the office through peculiar paths rarely taken. A joy-filled smile shines on her face, but underneath is a soul-deep determination to turn every inconvenience, every difficulty, into fresh opportunity to make a positive difference for someone else. At least in each building we want two rooms, entrance and exit. And from there we also want to go to Khan Christian Association of Nigeria. Okay to also make churches accessible okay. and also the mocks, the national body. Okay. We will also go there. Yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah, you can. Hello. Yeah, and I can. Navigating the NNPC towers is an extra challenge for this emerging <laughs> young African leader. That's right. Yeah. Even as the massive complex demands daily distance travel, she says she appreciates the accessibility of elevators and ramps throughout the facility. Upon reaching an office space she shares with her able-bodied colleagues, she sheds light on her daily duties. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, how is work? Okay. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I type memos and I also dispatch memos. 
to various departments. It involves movement because if I am sent with documents to another department, I need to move with my powered wheelchair from block C to block A, or block C to block B, or block C to block D. And it's very, very comfortable. I enjoy my work because they have also done well to provide a powered wheelchair for us which help us in moving around easily and independently. The journey to this point has been long, winding and strenuous, with her focus fixed on a future now filled with hopes and aspirations, she still cannot forget the pains of yesterday, even as she counts her blessings. I was affected by polio when I was two years old. I grew up and found myself differently from other kids. So at that time, inferiority complex set in. I didn't want to mingle with other kids. I didn't want to play with them. Until my mom walked on me, she said, this happened for good. So I should accept it and I should always thank God for my life. So good it was at I'm that good. point well. that I began to feel free. Yeah, I, I began to oh, it was mingle with my classmates and children in my neighborhood. I was supported by my family. They sent me to school. I finished my primary and secondary school in Kaguru, in Kaduna State. So from there, I headed to Abuja. I did my diploma at the University of Abuja in public administration. So after my diploma, about 11 of us of the same course, same year, came to NNPC for in PPMC for IT, that's industrial training, six months IT. So from there, I was the only person among them that was retained. So I asked one of the HR officers, uh, because I was so surprised and um, shocked when I heard the news that my name was among the staff that was recruited. So she said, one of the and HR managers came to my office where I served and she asked them some questions and she got to know that Lois is a hardworking <laughs> lady. She smiles a lot. She is friendly to everyone. She is humble. I'm not praising myself, but that was the response she got from my colleagues. Surviving the hard knocks of an upbringing in the difficult conditions of northern Nigeria, Lois says every bit of adversity she has endured since she was stricken with polio fuels her determination to alleviate the suffering of future generations. My parents ensure that I go to school every day. They've done their best by supporting me in primary and secondary education. But after then, my mom was retrenched, retrenched and my dad also lost his job. So I asked myself so many questions. How will I go further? Then I started selling recharge card and making phone calls to be able to support myself in school. And that was how I was able to um, sponsor myself in the diploma I got from the University of Abuja, with also the support of friends and neighbors. Even some members of my church, they also supported me. But today is a different story. I support other children to go to school by setting up 
a foundation called Cedar Seed Foundation, where we advocate for the rights of disabled people. It was set up in 2011. In 2012, we went to Kaduna State and distributed 120 mobility aids to some indigents in Kaduna State. And that project, and that was the first project that was supported by NNPC. Then, the second project was called Inclusive Education Project, where we gave out scholarship awards to 256 students with the support of Sahara Foundation. And Sahara Foundation is also a contact I got from NNPC. Disabled people have rights, they have potentials, they have abilities, they have what it takes to be productive. The only thing they need is opportunity and support and they will deliver exceedingly well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for many, sport offers an escape from the rigors of life, but from wow, the perspective of Nigeria's you. physically challenged, sport <laughs> offers a painful <laughs> reminder of a marginalized yeah. existence often lived on the sidelines. Lois, you've been playing sports for years now as a disabled person in Nigeria. Can you talk a little bit about what the level of acceptability has been? We are making progress. It's a gradual process, but we really need to put more efforts and encourage disabled sports in Nigeria. As you could see, when I was coming, I had to be carried because the entrance is not accessible to me. There is no ramp, only staircase. So two hefty men took me in my wheelchair and they brought me into the court. Some of them are just at home doing nothing. We can encourage them to join sport and make themselves busy with sport. The Paralympians did very, very well. I did just concluded Paralympics in 2016. All the gold medals Nigeria got, they came back home with it. But even a well reception um, dinner was not planned for them. There was no prizes, nothing to motivate them, nothing to encourage them to go further in sport. This kind of thing discourages disabled sport. It's heavy. It's okay. Oh. Wow. Woo. Very well done, well done. Even mundane daily tasks taken for granted by millions of able-bodied Nigerians on a daily basis remain beyond the reach of many disabled persons in the country. On a daily basis, millions of Nigerians saunter in and out of banking doors just like this one across the country. And what is taken for granted by an able-bodied majority is merely an aspiration for a silently suffering minority. But this young leader demands to be heard. 
I have money in the bank, but I don't have access to it. Why? Because I use a wheelchair. I need a ramp here. I need an open door to enable me go into the banking hall conveniently and confidently. Even the ATM machines is not accessible to me. And I have money, I cannot withdraw it independently. This is what we are talking about. We need access. On a scorching Abuja afternoon, we pay a home visit to Lois Alta. Good afternoon. My friend, how are you? Uh -huh. So where are we going to? Let me follow you. So this is Lois's place? Thank you. Epileptic power supply in Nigeria forces this young woman to run the diesel generator as she prepares lunch. Faced with increasing costs of commodities and low energy supply, she chooses to remain optimistic that a better day is on the horizon if the Nigerian government acts swiftly. The Nigerian Disability Bill has addressed many disability issues. In that bill, we request that MDAs should reserve some percentage of their employment opportunities to graduate with disabilities. Then for the unskilled ones, we can place them on monthly allowance that will help them to, to also be independent. Then, when we talk about access, yes, it's a very, very important issue for wheelchair users and people that use crutches to have access to buildings, hearing impaired, you have access to information, and the visually impaired people should also have access to braille materials. We have the deaf, we have the visually impaired, we have the physically challenged persons, we have the albinos, we have people affected by Hansen disease and other cluster groups that need care and attention. So what I really want to plead is Everybody should come together, let's team up and work towards signing that bill into law. Let's advocate more, let's partner together and ensure that the bill is being assented by the present administration. Yes, President Buhari has shown commitment by appointing senior special advisor to him on disability matters. Well, we need more of that. We want to see governors having disability rights commission in their states, and those commissions should be managed by disabled people, because they said, he who wears the shoes knows where it pinches. So they should be given opportunities to manage their own issues by themselves 
And secondly, I want to plead with Mr. President to sign the bill into law when it comes to his table. Lois attributes some of her outstanding leadership capabilities to her experience interacting with influential leaders in the United States after she was selected as a Mandela Fellow under the Young African Leaders Initiative, YALI. It was an amazing experience attending a leadership program at Arizona State University for two months. Then from there, we headed to Washington, D.C., where we had presidential summit with President Obama, who initiated that program. And I was opportune to get a handshake from him. It was amazing. I met with some members of the Senate and their offices when we were taken by our representative from the university. I was able to go to the cave. I went to, I, I visited mountains, caves, and all those places were accessible. I went with my motorized wheelchair and I really enjoyed access. This is what we are talking about that we need in Nigeria. In the U.S., I was independent. I walked through the walkways. I joined buses without being assisted. I bought trains without being assisted at all. So if government officials can implement these issues in Nigeria, it will go a, a long way in making things happen for disabled people. YALI program has been very, very helpful to me. I got many connections through YALI program that we are still partnering till tomorrow. U.S. Embassy has been amazing. They've been helpful. They've been there for disabled people at any time. They are part of the partners that we are working on achieving this um, Nigerian Disability Bill. Where Lois Alta sees inequality, she pursues equality. Where she encounters a gap, she builds a bridge. These qualities, among many others, comprise one of Africa's future leaders. Lois's ability to rise above her limitation and embrace her leadership role under difficult conditions is something that is not only remarkable, but also reaffirming of the fact that no matter what the circumstance dictates, we do have a choice in how we respond to it. This choice is often a gateway to destiny, as we see in the life of this extraordinary young woman. Next week on the program, our journey leads us to Accra, Ghana, where many distinguished young West African leaders gathered to share their experience and their thoughts on the future of Africa. Don't miss what these brilliant young leaders have to say next week on the program. My name is Ajuri Ngelale. Until next time, lead where you are and followers will find you.